Welcome back, coding comrades, to another episode of Conquering the JavaScript Interview. Today, we're going to tackle the popular wave array problem that can make any coding interview a breeze. With a couple of nifty solutions up our sleeves, we're going to showcase our coding prowess and keep our interviewers impressed. So uh, grab your surfboard bra and get ready to ride the wave of knowledge as we crest through this challenge and make a splash. Um, yeah, so today's algorithm is sorting or basically creating a wave array. Uh, we're going to be writing a function that takes an array of unsorted integers and sorts the array. Sorts, sort, sorts the array, hashtag professional intro, sorts the array into a wave array. So in technical terms, an, an array of starting at index zero to the n minus one, which is the, you know, the length minus one, basically the last position of an index of an array is sorted in wave form if zero is greater than or equal to one, which is less than or equal to two, which is greater than or equal to three. So basically we're going to think like a literal wave where the value here is smaller than the value here, which is bigger than the value here, and et cetera. Like it's gonna be a wave of integers. So basically big to small, big to small, big to small, big to small. So a high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low values. So it's not that we're sorting it into and in what we've been doing in a lot of the previous algorithms where we'd simply sort the array into typically ascending or descending order depending on our use cases. Here we're gonna be sorting it into high, low patterns, right? Um, so taking a look at an, an easier to look at example, I think would be this bottom one here, which would be taking an input array of 100, 300, 200, 500, 400, which would get it sorted to, and again, like there are multiple solutions to this, so it does not have to be this particular uh, wave array. There's typically multiple solutions to a lot of these, depending on whether you want to sort them or not. But we have 200, which is a high, the crest of a wave, then we got the trough of a wave right here. The wave goes down and it goes back up again and gets knocked back down and gets up again. So, you know, that is that is our wave array pattern. We should be able to handle negative integers as well. Uh, and then just having some of our fun random inputs, like one, two, three, four, five is a ascended, ascending sorted array of integers. And our output ends up being two to one, up to four, down to three, up to five. Hence, we get our wave array pattern. So uh, with that in mind, let's think about how to approach this one. Because now that we kind of have a better understanding through examples and technical terms of what an array, wave array is, it's actually not too bad to code the logic. But I realized that in my playlist series, in this series, this playlist, I haven't covered, I've done some like temp, temp value holding and moving around, but this is a cool one to know how to do for this particular, this particular function, right? So we're gonna imagine for our analogy on this problem before we begin coding it so we can kind of get in the mindset of how to tackle it, we are gonna have a row of people standing in line ordered by the heights from shortest to tallest, right? So we're gonna rearrange the people so that they alternate between taller and shorter individuals creating a wave pattern of heights. So we have a bunch of individuals, we're gonna sort them from shortest to tallest and then we're gonna simply then uh, very easily to start in ascending order of their heights. So we're gonna start with the shortest people first at the beginning of the line. And we're gonna start with that first person in the line, pair them up with the next person, creating groups of two, right? So we're gonna look at the shortest person in line, which is index zero. And then the index one will be the next shortest person in line or a slightly taller person, however you wanna think about it. Now, now that we have created these groups of two, for each pair, we're simply going to swap their positions so the taller person is always on the left of the shorter person. We're gonna keep doing that for each pair. Uh, and by the end of completing that process, we're gonna have a line of people arranged in a wave pattern. The height of the people will alternate between taller and shorter individuals, just like the elements in our wave array that we are about to get to. So uh, we are going to take the, there's two approaches, there's two implementations I'm gonna show on this one. And as always, I'll try and cover their pros and cons to the best of my ability, depending on what our use cases happen to be. So with that analogy in mind, let's go ahead and start our first implementation by sorting our array of integers, just like we would sort our array of, or our line of uh, people to shortest to tallest. So first thing we're gonna do is just sort our input array, like so, right? We're gonna 
do an ascending order like that to make sure that whatever array input we are given, we are gonna go ahead and sort it out with this little function here. So that way we can now look through element pairs together and swap their positions for each pair until we're done with the array. So with that sort out of the way, we can now actually write our logic to begin looking at pairs of individuals and swapping their positions. So for that, we are going to use a for loop. So I actually do want to control the, because we don't have to go to the end of the, we don't have to go to its array length, we just have to go until the length minus one, that last index position, because don't forget, for once, we're not moving on a per element basis like a lot of our algorithms have so far. We're actually gonna be doing a i plus equals two, because remember from the analogy, we look at two, a pair of individuals as we move up the array and we're simply swapping their height positions left and right, right? So rather than moving by an element at a time, we're gonna be moving by a pair of elements at a time, hence the i plus equals two instead of our traditional classic i plus plus. So that's why I also liked having this algorithm here in this playlist series to make sure we actually cover uh, some kind of algorithm that has us iterate not in a just a plus plus fashion. I think that's important to get your hands on as a newbie or any developer at all having some experience dealing with things like that with moving. We can get into a whole fiasco with sorting algorithms, but for now we're going to get to, we're going to talk about this one here before I get into that, the depths of that kind of stuff. So first things first, I need to swap their positions, but I can't just swap them without overriding one value to another. So what we have to do is create my handy dandy temp variable. Its purpose is going to be taking the, so let's say shortest person, the person on the left, and it's going to you know temporarily store that value so we could reassign it at a later date and time without getting overridden by something else by mistake. Later date and time is in a couple of lines of code down. I don't know why I say it that way. So I guess it's an idiom that's like in my repertoire that I tend to overuse. But anyway, like I said, we need to take the person that's slightly taller on the right and move them to the left. So what we're going to do is say array at square bracket i, which represents the left-hand side of the pair in, in our first iteration, index 0, a.k.a. our shortest person. We're going to take the person on the right-hand side, which is i plus 1, and move them over to the left-hand side. So we're going to do that by an assignment. That's how we're going to assign a right-hand value to the left-hand value by saying, take the individual to the right, which should be theoretically taller after being sorted in our line of uh, people. And again, that's why we had to store this array i into a temporary variable is because we are overriding or reassigning its value here. And so I don't want to lose that value because what I need to do now is say the former right-hand position is now going to be whoever the shorter person was swapped over. So we're going to swap those two individuals over by assigning the temp value like that. And believe it or not, that is all we need to do to solve this problem. Like I said from the analogy, we're going to take our, our line of people, we're going to sort them in ascending order from shortest to tallest, then we're simply going to look at each pair of people, starting at the first person and the second person, aka indexes 0 and 1. When speaking of arrays, we have a short individual and a slightly taller individual, and all we're going to do is swap their positions, then move to the next pair, swap them, move to the next pair, swap them, move to the next pair, swap them, and at the end, we're going to have our wave array sorted, which is pretty dang cool. So let's go ahead and console log what our array is going to look like as we go through these values to take a look. So let's go ahead and copy our first sort wave array. One, two, three, four, five call right here. Let's give that a shot. What do we see? Two, one, four, three, and five. And voila, we have a sorted wave array, which is the output we expect here. But like I said, there are, if we didn't sort this, there are multiple ways to solve this one here. The alternate solution you'll see here that I'll be coding here in just a moment, which is a little bit more complex than this. Well, not in terms of big O, but it is a bit more difficult to understand and read the first go around. But that being said, like this, this particular output is not the only possible solution. If we're sorting it, it is, but if we're not sorting it, we have other options. Let's take a look at the next one down here as well, and I need to clear my console so we don't get like stacking solutions. So our next one, five, three, eight, six, 11, and 10 goes down. So that's our sorted array right there, looking, or our wave away, <laughs> wave array that there, wave array. Whoops, miscopied, there we go. Negative three, 
negative four, negative one, negative two, and zero. Yeah, that, that one took me some brain power to make sure that the negatives were correctly <laughs> wave ascending there. Or wave of high, low, high, low, high, low. Looks good. All right, and our final call to sort wave array to take a look at our outputs here to confirm it worked is 200, 100, 400, 300, and 500. I like the hand motion here, almost like making sure mentally I'm confirming that those numbers are going up and down the way they should for our wave pattern here. So yeah, welcome to wave arrays, folks. This is a classic interview question. You'll see it. The chances of you encountering it are fairly high. Um, Righto. So, you know, like I said, it sorts the array in ascending order, iterates over the sorted array, swapping adjacent elements, resulting order wave array will have the desired high, low, high pattern, and that's really all there is to it for this particular implementation. In terms of big O complexity and space, we have a couple things to take into consideration on this solution. Like I said, it's very legible, it's easy to follow and understand, it's fun and easy to write, and you feel pretty cool understanding it. Uh, but it has, it depends on, like, you know, obviously our, the bigger input gets the, the things that get kind of wonky, but because we have to do this sort function, JavaScript has a time complexity of sort functions. The JavaScript sort function has a big O of, yeah, that sounds right, of n log, n times log n, where n is the number of elements in the array, right? This is because most JavaScript engines will use, um, what's it called? Quick sort, merge sort, or, uh, or I think times? No, uh, they mostly use quick sort or merge sort algorithms in which they have an average complexity of n log n, n times log n. Uh, again, it really depends on what browser you're running your, what JavaScript engine you are running your code in, in most modern browsers. And it's unlikely in modern browsers that we're gonna have quick sort, which has an N squared big O, but we're not gonna, we're gonna assume this is an N times log N for most modern JavaScript engines based on how their sort function is implemented, right? Uh, going through the pairs of individuals and swapping their adjacent elements with a step of two, the time complexity for that is O uh, big O of N divided by two, which can honestly be simplified just to O N in terms of big O notation. Uh, again, like just, just, you know, the bigger the input gets, the more swaps you're going to have to do. Uh, and then overall time complexity, we have those two steps, right? We have our sort and then we have our, our loop iteration that has to swap the elements, which would end up being O N times log N for the sort plus big O of N for our uh, swapping. Again, that's kind of like simpl simplifying it down. And in big O notation, the dominant term is what we're going to be saying the complexity is. So we're going to say n, our complexity is n times log n for this one, right? So that's what we're going to be looking at for that particular uh, sort wave array function where we have implemented. Uh, space complexity sort is an in-place sorting algorithm, which means it does not require any additional memory to be allocated, right? This is an in-place thing. We're not creating a new array. Uh, so, right, uh, other implementations may, depending on how they implement their sort function, it may take some small amount of extra memory, making it maybe log n for big O. It really depends on whether they use quick sort or merge, merge, merge sort or whatever sorting algorithm the sort function takes on the engine you're using, right? And the swapping set doesn't require any kind of memory except for that temporary variable, which is a constant amount of space. So the overall space complexity of this thing will probably be O log n, so... Complexity or time, I should probably call it, right? Time and then big O of, um, yeah, just, just log N for space because of potentially eating some memory depending on how the sort is implemented and the constant memory for the temp right there. So yeah, that's our sort wave array function. And now we're gonna talk about an alternate solution here that... I came across and I thought it was interesting enough to include in this video. Again, like thank you Stack Overflow Post for giving this idea and then me deep diving to see how it works and trying to figure out how to explain it to y'all. It uh, it will not, it, we're gonna save ourselves the effort of sorting here, right? So what did I call it for my testing? Create wave array, okay. That's because I wanna make sure I add my, my for testing purposes, I wanna make sure my function names are consistent, create wave array. Okay, cool. Now, function 
create wave array will just like our previous one require an array to do its job. I'm gonna go ahead and comment that stuff out for now. I'm going to collapse this sucker for now and just, we're gonna focus on create wave wave array. So to do this one, we're gonna to have to, we're gonna save ourselves the complexity of sorting the input array. Cause like I said, there are multiple solutions to this one. Like we, like even though it's called sort a wave array, I should make it maybe create a wave array or just wave arrays. Uh, you know, we, we sorted the value, the input value first in order to very quickly create the swapping pattern to make a wave array. But I said, that's not the only solution. We could create a wave array without these sorting these numbers by using some cool little logic we're about to go through here. But either way we're gonna approach this, we still have to iterate through an array. And in this particular case, we will be looking at each individual element and comparing it to the element's neighbor, right? And we're gonna be checking on odd or even values here on these value, on, on these elements. So check this out. Right, so we're not gonna have any kind of generic condition. We're gonna have an if and an otherwise if, an else if, and we're not gonna have some kind of generic else condition, right? Because what we wanna do is swap, again, if i is even, and the current element is smaller than the next one, then we're gonna swap them. If i is odd and the current element is larger than the next one, we swap them. So check that out. We're gonna be looking at our iterator. If our iterator is even, right? We're going and the current element is less than the next element, that means we swap them, right? So. and current element is smaller than next, swap them. That is our logic here, right? So for every even index position, we look at the an element and the one next to it and then swap them if they're, if the this one is smaller than the next one. So we, will, we can do this with some cool destructuring array logic here by doing the following. Array i, array i plus one, from array i plus one, array i. Right, so what we're doing is we're basically swapping these elements by destructuring them from these positions, by assigning these values here to these destructured values here. So the current index element we're looking at takes on the value of the one to the right of it, AKA the one to the right has now swapped to the left. And then the former position on the right-hand side then becomes the left-hand side, so the current array index of i, zero for the first iteration, then becomes one. So this is our cool little inline logic to swap those array elements in the case that the iterator's even and the left-hand element is smaller than the right-hand element. We swap their positions with this cool little bit of code right here. Now, like I had mentioned, if our iterator is odd, and the current element is larger than the next one, we swap them. So we're gonna use opposite logic basically for this one to say, if i is odd and current element is larger than the next one, we swap them. So if i modulus two does not equal zero, we have an odd iterator and if our array element we're looking at is greater than our next element, we're going to swap them using very similar looking logic. So we're gonna say, just like before, we're gonna do a cool little in place destructure swap to say our current, not bad, our current element is going to take on the value of the right hand side element by doing the following. I should have done it this way the first time. Okay, so we're gonna swap those positions. And then our next element will take on the value that was formerly on the left-hand side, our greater value. So we're gonna have our i like that. And then when it's all said and done, we should be able to return our array and console log the array as well. And even though this won't give us the exact same console log values that I have in my examples up here, they should, however, still work just fine 
for visualizing this here. So we're going to create a wave array on all these, boom, and then comment them in, and then hold on to your butts. Two, one, four, three, five, makes sense. 11, five, 10, three, eight, six, zero, negative two, negative one, negative four, negative three, 300, 100, 500, 200, 400. So it's not the same logged order that we have from my examples here. Looking at this bottom one, 200, 100, 400, we have 300, 100, 500, but they still pass the test of creating a wave array. Now, whether you want it sorted or not would be the question we have here, but this is some cool, again, I wanted to show these, this really cool kind of in-place destructuring logic of swapping the array index values with the right and left hand sides like how you do a right and left hand swap and the other way around as well and i think it's pretty cool to know how to do that i think i talked about this particular a technique similar to this in my swapping variables without a temp i think i talked about this and i think i also talked about this cool technique in oh what video was it I think it was one of my data structure videos where I talked about this. I'll try and find it and I'll look in the description below and I'll have a, a like a comment with the link to the video saying, here's where I show how to swap A and B. Oh, that's right. It was like somehow it was like two input, like merging two input arrays, I think. Merging two arrays and then I ra rather than have to write logic to determine which one's bigger or not, I always just make the smaller one, the left hand and the right hand one. So how to swap A and B. I'll, I'll put the video in the description below. But yeah, that's another way of solving the wave array problem here by simply, again, moving every odd and even value and comparing to see if one, if it's less than on evens, greater than on odds, and then just swapping their positions until we get our created wave array. It's just not sorted in this particular case. Now, the reason I have my double module exports down here is for my tests is because I have, surprise, surprise, uh, two ways. Got to comment something out here. What's going on? Create wave array, sort wave array, did I? Oh, did I comment it out? No, it's there. Why is that not? Oh, because I had it for my old function call. That's right, sort wave array becomes sort wave array. Okay, so I have a couple tests here for this one as well. So if I wanted to see if my code passes or not, I can run my quick test here and I should be good to go. Hey, all my test cases pass for both creating a wave array and for my wave array to tests. Sort wave array is not defined. How did I have some auto saves happening here? I think that it might just be like old history that my, yeah. Okay, it, all, all, eight are, all eight tests are passing, meaning my test for creating a wave array that's not sorted is correct, and then my sorting a wave array is also correct for the given test that I have. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, the creating a wave array function right there. Now, the benefit of this one, it has a O of N because we iterate through the array one time. We don't sort it, we don't do anything crazy. So this would be the big O time complexity of this one and the space complexity. Again, we don't create even any temporary variables, do we? We simply just swap array values, which is a, compl a space complexity of one. We use a constant amount of additional memory for swapping elements. And this solution is definitely more efficient than the sorting based approach, especially when working with large arrays. So if you have a very large input for having to sort these things, this might be a bit more difficult to remember how to write during an interview process, but nevertheless, it is a more efficient one on both time and space complexity. But as you can see, there are some pros and cons between these two approaches, right? Uh, time complexity. While this has a complexity of O N, it's more, way more efficient than N log N. Uh, the first implementation, especially as our array gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the time complexity on this one will get better and better and better and better. Same thing with the space com space complexity. Um, because we have a big O of one on space because nothing is created, we do have that log in on this implementation because of our temporary variable uh, constantly being needed and our array sort adding some overhead to it as well. So uh, it just depends on if the JavaScript engine you're using requires any additional memory, right? For space, that's why that ends up being log n on that one. But there are some cons. I mean, this is a pretty unique and goofy looking solution in my opinion. 
Uh, and it doesn't guarantee a unique wave array as there could be multiple valid ar uh, wave arrays for a given input, right? So the, the first implementation guarantees a unique, uh, a unique solution because it sorts it first and then creates the wave array, ensuring the output is consistent, right? Uh, regardless of what our inputs arrangement is. So that's a nice thing about this one. You're gonna get a consistent output for any given input. Whereas this one could create different outputs depending on the sort order of your inputs, right? Because you don't have you don't have a unique output with create wave array. And it's definitely less intuitive, right? Like I had to pause and make sure I was saying this correctly with the logic here to make sure that I could describe the idea to you guys and gals out there. Uh, so it's definitely gonna be less intuitive. Someone else coming in the future just look at your code to try and figure out what you're doing if this isn't a code base. It'd be a lot more difficult with if you had especially no comments happening. This is a lot of gobbledygook with no comments going on, right? <laughs> uh, it involves conditional swaps based on the odd or even iterator, and the you know this first implementation is way more straightforward. And this is exactly what I'd answer in an interview. And because if you couldn't remember how to answer this one in an interview, but you could answer this one, at least being able to discuss the uh, time and space, big O complexities would be a good starting point in talking about like, oh, if you didn't sort it, you'd have to do a different bit of logic, which has its pros and cons, right? But uh, this one's more efficient in terms of time and space, but less, less intuitive and doesn't guarantee a unique result, whereas all the opposites of this one are true. Easier to read and understand, uh, worse time and space complexity, but it's more, in, like again, it's easier to read. And that can be such a huge boon sometimes that you will take the hit at optimization for re overall readability and maintainability of said code. Um, unfortunately, I don't have and I couldn't find any kind of tangible or concrete examples of why this algorithm is cool and why you should bother knowing what a wave array is. Um, I mean, generally, your, your typical general high points it improves your problem solving skills bro it lets you explore algorithm complexity complexity no problem you know like it's it's your, your typical stuff like that or like hey it's good for interview practice it's like well no doy that's why you're here for this thing um i mean i guess you could do something with it in data visualization i mean wave arrays can create interesting patterns for presentations or displaying data in unique and visually appealing ways uh or organizing data that, if you ever come across something that requires like ho high, low value sorting, maybe like sensor readings of some kind or stock data, then this could actually come into play somewhere. But you know, other, other than that, it really is just to cl pass a classic interview problem that showed off some cool skills to pick up on your, put a couple, uh, a couple of cool tools to put in your tool belt for this one. So as always, I hope y'all I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you all found this video helpful in, in our journey to become better developers together. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, a like, a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And I'd love to hear you all thoughts if you have other solutions compared to this crap I have on the screen here. I would love to see them. Uh, so yeah, get in the comments below if you have something more efficient or another way of implementing this I'd like to see. Remember, constructive and positive comments are always welcome here. So let's keep this discussion going and help each other, me and you out there and prove our skills together. So thanks again for tuning in and I'll see y'all in the next video.